Sunday, September 3. Advice to Children What advice does Paul give to children, and how does he support that counsel from the Old Testament? We're going to read Ephesians 6, 1-3, and we'll also look at passages in Matthew and Mark. First of all, Ephesians 6, 1-3, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And we'll compare that with Matthew 18, verses 1 to 5. At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you were converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. And Matthew 18, verse 10. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father, who is in heaven. And Mark 10, beginning at verse 13. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. To appreciate fully Paul's counsel to children, we must imagine it being read out in the house churches of the thriving metropolis of Ephesus. The word children, Greek tartekna, could refer to a wide range of ages, since children remained under father's authority until the father was sixty in the Greek tradition, or until his death in the Roman one. These children, though, are young enough to be under parental training, as we read in verse 4 of Ephesians chapter 6, but old enough themselves to be disciples in their own right. We hear Paul appealing to children who were worshipping in Christian congregations to obey and honour their parents in the Lord, that is, in Christ. And let's compare that with a couple of other texts in Ephesians 5, 22, and Ephesians 6, verses 4, 5, 7, 8, and 9. Ephesians 5, 22 reads, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. And Ephesians 6, verses 4 and 5 reads, And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord, Bond servants to be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart as to Christ. And verses 7 to 9. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you masters, do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. We are invited here to respect children as themselves being disciples of Christ and to include them as active participants in worship. This makes the passage a foundational one for parenting and for ministry to children. Paul's command to obey is not absolute. When the command of parents, as Ellen White writes in Adventist Home, page 293, contradicts the requirements of Christ, then, painful though it may be, they, that's the children, must obey God and trust the consequences with him. End of quote. Paul completes his exhortation to children by quoting the fifth commandment, bearing witness to the high value he places on the ten commandments as a source of guidance for Christian believers. 
an obvious feature of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 right through to chapter 6 verse 9, and especially in chapter 4 verses 25 and 28 and chapter 5 verses 3 to 14. He begins the quotation, Honour your father and mother, in Ephesians 6 verse 2, breaks into it with an editorial comment, which is the first commandment with promise, and then completes the citation, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth, in verse 3. The fifth commandment bears witness that honouring parents is part of God's design for human beings to thrive. Respect for parents, imperfect though they may be, will help foster health and well-being. And so to finish today, how do these verses reinforce how important family relationships are?